What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. You're obviously going to be new here because this is my very first video. My name is Corky. I am a resin crafter and I do other kinds of crafts as well. Um, I have been making videos for quite some time on a different platform that is a little less censored than this one but I would like to be able to share my crafting videos with my friends and family and that platform isn't exactly a platform that I know most of them would go to so that's why I'm doing YouTube now and on this channel I would like to kind of incorporate um, different stories into my crafting journey so I'm basically going to be going over like true crime and conspiracy theories, um, the dark side of history, all that kinds of fun stuff. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. I am actually filming this video on Christmas night. I have a hot toddy here and it is nice and toasty warm. Um, I also do film these videos in my garage. I have a little craft hut in here and it's cold this time of year, obviously. So I have some heaters going. I'm really sorry if you can hear the buzzing in the background. Um, also, this camera isn't like the best of quality, but you know, we gotta kinda work with what we've got for now. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys about the darker side of the Nutcracker and the composer's life story. Before we get into the life of Peter Tchaikovsky, I really quick want to tell you guys about the projects I'm working on today. First up is this beautiful lighter that I already started. This is a Christmas present for one of my cousins and um, I just put a little bit of alcohol inks on it and now I'm going to be putting a couple of vinyl decals on it. It says fuck off here. So one side is going to say fuck, the other side is going to say off. It's going to be awesome. Basically what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to tape it to this motor here. This is just a wheel that is going to turn it at a very slow rate. It's a rotisserie motor and I'm going to tape it up, put these decals on and put a little tiny bit of resin on there and that's pretty much it for that craft. And now moving on to this one. This one is kind of like my Nutcracker inspired craft. I'm first going to be dusting this with this Miracle Red Mica Powder and then I'm going to be coloring the resin with this Rose Gold Mica Powder. And I'm also going back and forth with the idea of putting some iridescent glitter in there. I think I'm just going to wait to see what it looks like in the cup and go from there. But I'm going to be mixing about 200 milliliters of epoxy. I'm going to leave it clear at first, so that way I can put a clear layer on the lighter. And then I'm going to be coloring it, possibly adding some glitter, and dumping it into these molds. So, let's get into this story as I start working on these projects. And of course, because I'm working on these projects, I'm not going to be making a whole lot of eye contact with the camera, so I do apologize for that, but I'm sure that these are going to turn out awesome, and hopefully that will make up for the lack of eye contact in this video. Where should we start? I think it's important to know a little bit about Peter Tchaikovsky's life before I tell you about the dark side of the Nutcracker. I think it'll kind of help you understand why it is such a tragic story in the end. If you don't know who Peter Tchaikovsky is, he is the composer of The Nutcracker and he is a Russian composer from the Romantic era. I can't be 100% certain that his name is actually Peter. It is spelled Peter in some articles and then there's other articles where it is spelled P-Y-O-T-R. So that's a little bit different way to spell Peter, but he's also from Russia and you know, I'm not really educated on Russian spellings, so maybe that's like a common way to spell Peter in Russia. Moving on, he was born on May 7th, 1840, and he was one of six children. Now everyone says that their kids are smart, but Peter really was smart. Peter started taking piano lessons when he was only five years old and by the time that he was eight he could actually read the music sheet better than the teacher could. He was also fluent in German and French by the time that he was six. His parents were super supportive about his musical talents. talents. 
His parents were super supportive about his musical talents and they actually hired a tutor for him and they purchased a, I'm going to butcher this, but it's called an orchestrion. It's basically a form of a barrel organ and it can do like different forms of orchestral effects, which I think is pretty dang cool. However, in 1850, by this time Peter was 10, the family's finances were not the greatest and at the time there wasn't really a lot of opportunity for musicians in the Russian culture. Really the only opportunities for a career in music would be to be a teacher or to be an instrumental instrumentalist in one of the imperial theaters but that was actually considered a lower rank in society so that would be more like a peasant level job his family weren't like nobles or anything but they also weren't peasants so they didn't really want their son to like stoop down to that level even though they did love his uh, talents so that same year in 1850 the family decided that they were going to send peter to a preparatory boarding school in St. Petersburg. They actually sent him to this prep school to try and prepare him so that they could send him to the Imperial School for Judas Prudence, if that's how you say it. But at the time he was only 10 and the minimum age of acceptance was actually 12. So he spent two years in the prep school before he was actually accepted into the boarding school. This was actually really traumatic for Peter. He had major separation anxiety from leaving his mom and unfortunately it led to a lifelong trauma of separation anxiety because his mother ended up passing away not long after he entered the boarding school. Peter was only 14 years old when his mother tragically passed away so naturally that was very hard on him. But it also inspired him to make his first serious attempt at composing a waltz in her honor. Although tragically heartbroken, Peter did bond with his friends through music and they were in choir together and they would often kind of jazz up some of their choir themes that they had rehearsed previously and they would also go to orchestras and operas together. His father continued to be very supportive of his musical adventures and he actually funded private lessons from a man named Rudolf Kuhninger. I don't know if I said that right. I'm not Russian. Peter's father actually asked Kuhninger one time if he saw any potential in Peter. Unfortunately, Kundinger did not have a very good experience with his own career as a musician and so he ended up telling Peter's father that he didn't really see him having a career as a composer or a performer. However, he did say that he was impressed with his talents. So after his father heard that, he actually told him that he should probably just finish up his lessons and try to apply for a post at the Ministry of Justice. So that's exactly what he did. On June 10th, 1859, he was graduated and he had been appointed to the Magistry of Justice. And within only eight months, he had actually risen to the position of senior assistant. So, like, he was doing pretty dang good in that spot. And he stayed in that position for the next three years. In the same year of 1859, the Russian Musical Society was founded, the RMS. And Peter actually decided to attend some of these classes. He attended some classes about the music theory. And these classes were taught by Nikola Zaremba. And these classes were also a predecessor to the St. Petersburg Conservatory. So the St. Peter's Conservatory opened in 1862. As soon as Peter could, he enrolled in the St. Petersburg Conservatory's premier classes. He studied harmony and counterpart with that same teacher, Zaremba, and then he also studied instrumentation and composition with Rubinstein. Peter graduated in 1865, and his studies really cultured him in Western music, so his music ended up not being really Western or Russian. He kind of just like mixed the two of them. 
And at first, it created a very deep-seated, self-conscious thought pattern, which was obviously very unhealthy. But his work really set him apart from other composers because he was able to take the aspects of his childhood native music and really combined it with Western music in such a beautiful way. It was so very unique and personal to him. It was like unmistakable that it was his music. He wasn't always appreciated by his teachers. However, uh, Rubenstein's younger brother, Nikolai Rubenstein, he really appreciated Peter's work and he actually offered him a position as a professor of music theory at the soon-to-be Moscow Conservatory. However, his salary wasn't going to be very much and this was kind of like what his parents were trying to avoid to begin with. So from the years 1867 to 1878, he actually kind of uh, was doing like his own composing and also doing some like musical journalism. And I do believe he was also teaching as well. But the combination of the jobs actually allowed him to be able to travel abroad. Peter did actually live as a bachelor for most of his life, but he did fall in love at one point with a woman named Desiree Artot. They met in 1868 and she was a Belgian soprano in the opera. And they fell in love and ended up getting engaged However, she would not leave the stage and did not want to settle in Russia, so they ended up cutting the engagement off, which was very tragic for Peter, and he actually said that she was the only woman that he ever loved. However, with that being said, he did actually get married to a woman named Anatonia Milovoka. And this was in 1877 at this point, and he was 37 years old. However, this marriage did not last very long. He ended up moving out after only two and a half months of being with her. And this was actually very heartbreaking for him and he ended up spending many years abroad just traveling by himself. However, the same year that he got married, 1877, he started corresponding with a woman named Nadezhda von Meck. And she was a Russian Empire businesswoman. She had a lot of money and she often funded art and musical people. She had heard of Peter's work and she actually was a patron of one of his students. And the way that they started talking was actually from his old colleague, Nikolai Rubinstein. Mech is a little bit easier and apparently he really wasn't that great about um, keeping track of his finances and he would oftentimes ask for um, like advances on his money. However, he only corresponded with Mech through letter. They never met in person and this was by her choice. She really, really loved Peter's work. So she did not want to meet him in person and risk like ruining the idea that she had of him in her head. They did have a few like chance encounters um, during their lifetime, but they never actually spoke in person. Being that he was now supported monetarily by Mech, he decided to leave the Moscow Conservatory and work on his music full time. In 1881, Nikolai Rubinstein actually passed away from tuberculosis in Paris. And this was really, really heartbreaking for Peter because they had become really good friends, not to mention they had been colleagues for many years. However, he was really becoming pretty famous, and only three years later, he had gotten a lifelong pension from the Tsar Alexander III. In 1890, Mech ended up breaking their deal. She was actually very ill at this point, And she had wrote to him previously telling him about how her children had kind of like burnt through their inheritance, unfortunately. And she didn't really say anything about like cutting him off at this point. But then eventually she did send a letter saying that she was cutting him off. She sent a personal servant and delivered a 
whole year's worth of money in one lump sum and normally that didn't happen they usually just like mailed um, letters back and forth and she had asked him to um, get rid of all of their corresponding letters from each other which he agreed to do but didn't actually do and that's why we know about their correspondence today However, they didn't separate in hard feelings. She did ask him to never forget about her. So I think that they were still dear friends at the end. And there are some rumors that her family potentially um, forced her to end the agreement between the two of them. So that's really unfortunate. And it actually was a huge loss to Peter because she was his longest companion, basically. He told her everything. But Mech obviously knew talent when she saw it because Peter ended up becoming the first Russian composer to be known for his music internationally. Despite Peter's success in his career, he was actually still a very depressed man. He had gone through a lot in his life and lost a lot of very close people to him. And that kind of brings us to the point in his life when he started to write The Nutcracker. So in 1890, Ivan Sefolovsky, the director of the Imperial Theater, commissioned Peter to write, or compose rather, a um, double bill program with both an opera and a ballet. I'm going to turn this wheel on now and it might end up squeaking a little bit, so I am sorry about that. So this ballet was going to be an adaptation of Hoffman's Nutcracker and the Mouse King. And honestly, Peter like was not inspired by the storyline at all. He thought it was kind of childish and just like not his cup of tea, I guess. So he actually had a very hard time finding inspiration writing this double bill. He didn't actually start writing anything until 1891 and that was a whole year before it was supposed to debut and when I say whole year I don't mean that's a long time like I mean like only a year especially because he had planned an opening concert um, in April and May of 1891 for the Carnegie Hall opening in the United States so he had planned to kind of write on the planes and buses and trains and in hotel rooms while he was on his journey to America um, but he ended up uh, with somewhat of a writer's block when he was in Paris so he ended up going on a 10-day isolation and I don't recall like where he went but it was somewhere away from Paris basically and the isolation did not help his depressive tendencies whatsoever he had actually been alone since his divorce in 1877 he had just been kind of isolating and working on his own work and it was just not good for his mental health. So Peter had a brother named Modest. Like I said, he was one of six. So his brother Modest had actually planned to meet him on April 4th, 1891. And he knew that his brother was very depressed and he wanted to kind of, you know, cheer him up a little bit. So that was his plan, was to go meet him, and he was going to see him off to Haver. I don't know if I'm saying that properly. But unfortunately, on March 28th, Modest had received a telegraph telling him about his sister Alexandra's passing. And Alexandra was actually known as Sasha to her family. Sasha was one of Peter's literal best friends. She was there for him through everything and so I kind of want to read a little piece of what Modest had wrote about Sasha and Peter's relationship. I suck at reading so I have to pull my notes up, I'm sorry. She who had been to him a haven and a refuge from all the troubles of life was still the holiest reliquary of his childhood, his youth, and the chemenic of his life. For together with Mech, she had been his chief support, making him welcome and bestowing upon him the most affectionate attention. Modest went to Peter as soon as he had heard the news, and he had every intention on telling Peter the news in person. Unfortunately, 
Peter was so excited to see Modest that he couldn't tell him. He just didn't want to take that spark away from his brother. He even said, and I quote, Peter was as delighted to see me as though we had not met for ages. It was not difficult to guess at the overwhelming loneliness which he had experienced during his voluntary exile. Apart from the fact that I had found it hard to damp his cheerful mood, I became more and more preoccupied with the idea. Was it wise to tell him of our loss under the present circumstances? So Modest made the decision to wait until Peter returned from his tour to tell him about their tragic loss. Unfortunately, Peter had gone back to Paris and he went to the opera house and he went to the reading room and that's when he found the article talking about his sister's passing. This is a little piece that he wrote to his brother after he found out. Madi, yesterday I went to Paris. There I visited the reading room and read the announcement of Sasha's death. I started up as though a snake had stung me. Naturally, Peter was absolutely devastated and he still had to go on this tour to America. And he didn't end up writing anything while he was on his tour. I mean, how could you really expect him to with that kind of a loss, you know? However, Sasha's death did give him a new outlook on the Nutcracker. The once uninspirable story that he was really only composing out of obligation. But now when he thought of Clara, he saw Sasha. And he was reminded of all those childhood memories that he spent with her. All those Christmases that they had together, all of the days that they played together, and the woman that she became before she got sick. When I was doing my research for this story of the Nutcracker, I found so much more than I was expecting. And I found this video, and it was from the channel Listening In, and I want to read you what they said about Peter's grief and the part of the Sugar Plum Fairy and the Cavalier and how the music, I, I was in choir for years, but I can't describe the music the way that he descri described this music. So let me just uh, read this real quick for y'all. He says, the simple melody with an unassuming descending major scale as the two dance, we are hearing a longing melody that never varies, always returning to the same point and falling back down onto the weight of itself. Simplicity in the music, simplicity and intensity of grief is contained with this descending line, a representation of his love for his sister, Sasha. I just thought the way that he said that was so beautiful. And the Nutcracker's very first performance was actually in December of 1892. And it was, of course, a beautiful display of love and passion and grief for his sister that he lost much too soon. All right, that is where we are going to leave this for tonight. I will see you guys in just a few seconds for you guys. But in the morning for me, we will demold these projects and finish up this story real quick. Good morning, it is the next day and it is time to demold our projects and finish our story. So I'm going to start with this little guy. These are not very easy to demold, so again, not going to do very good eye contact, just a fair warning. In my personal opinion, I feel like knowing this backstory behind the Nutcracker really gives someone a different take and a different outlook on the story that was once a childhood fantasy is now such a, a dark story in my opinion. I know we're supposed to kind of like remove the artist from the art, but I also feel like knowing the story makes it a little bit more difficult to do that. Pretty much as difficult as this mold is being. Ooh, almost there. So not long after Shavatsky, or Peter as we were calling him, finished the Nutcracker, he wrote what was probably one of his dark pieces yet. Which isn't exactly surprising considering the traumas he had endured in his 
recent past, only nine days after the first performance of his last piece, Stravatsky actually ended up passing away. This was on November 6th, 1893. And they said that the cause of death was um, cholera, which actually was what his mother had passed away from as well. But some people actually speculate that he died from a self-inflicted suicide. I don't feel like the idea of him committing suicide is honestly too far-fetched, especially if you consider the fact that he was a very depressed man. He was very lonely throughout his life. He was living in a world that was not exactly accepting of his sexuality. There are some speculations that he was a gay man. And as we know, unfortunately, even today, we have trouble with society accepting people with uh, other sexual orientations than the quote-unquote old norm. And of course, he was also still dealing with the latest trauma of his sister's passing. So I don't think it would really come to much of a surprise to anybody if that was the case of his actual demise. So obviously that is where we end this story because that is the end of Peter Shavatsky's life and that is also the end of our crafts. So this is how they turned out. I think they look absolutely gorgeous. Here is the back of this lighter. I'm actually going to be delivering these two days so I'm really excited about that. All right, if you've made it to this part of the video, you are a real trooper. Thank you so much for sticking around. I really hope that you guys enjoyed my very first video on this channel. Um, I think I'm going to be going with the name Cosmo Craft Creations. That is also my Instagram name. But I think I'm going to be calling like this series on this channel um, Craft Conspiracies or Craft Spiracies. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, I will be making other videos that are more just like crafting tutorials, but I wanted to have this series in here as well because I'm really excited to share with you guys some of the stuff that I am personally interested in. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you guys can stay up to date with all of my uploads. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.